So hello everyone. Today we're going to have uh, our academic lecture with Professor Hamad Sansei, Hamad Hamad Sansei from the University of Aizu. We welcome you to the platform of the Gemina project and we ask you kindly to join us. If you have any question, do not hesitate to write it down on our chat box, chat box. And we thank you again for joining the Gemina project. Hamad Sansei, the floor is yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining uh, my presentation today. So the title of my talk will be about artificial intelligence and uh, recommendation systems in education and e-business and entertainment. Uh, I am a staff of the University of ISO, and I will shortly after the uh, my presentation, I will maybe shortly introduce the University of ISO as well. So let me start by... Uh, contents of my presentation. First, I will uh, talk about artificial intelligence. I will give a brief introduction and then uh, about recommender systems and its application in entertainment. I will give a Netflix example. Uh, I think all of you knows about Netflix, which is a famous platform for movie watching. And then I will uh, explain about our projects in uh, application of artificial intelligence uh, in education. And then I will introduce some research laboratories at University of ISO. And finally, I will give a short or brief introduction about University of ISO itself. So let me first start by uh, a short introduction about artificial intelligence. So as you can see, artificial intelligence touches every uh, direction in our life. So you can see in astronomy and healthcare, transportation, agriculture, education, uh, e-commerce, entertainment, uh, robotics, automotive and social media, data security, finance, gaming, uh, as well, everywhere, as you can see. So the biggest challenge uh, in science and technology today is to understand the human brain. So the understanding is the human brain is uh, one of the big uh, you know, research areas especially about reasoning and cognition and creativity. And creating intelligent machine, this is a big question. And uh, is it this really possible to do this or not? So what are the technical and uh, philosophical challenges? Because it's not only technical challenge that we face to imitate the intelligent machines, but it's also philosophical challenge how this will affect our lives and ethical issues also. We can argue that the AI possesses the most interesting challenges and questions in computer science today. Let us look to the human brain itself. The human brain is consists of billions of neurons and uh, nervous cells as a basic information processing unit. There is about estimated about uh, 10 to the power 12 neurons in the human brain, which is a huge number. Uh, more importantly, the connection between these neurons and the brain. So there is a synapse, it's called the synapse that connect the neurons with itself, which is about 10 to the power 14 connecting these neurons. Everything is done uh, by our brain activities like visual or hearing or speaking or thinking or emotion comes from these connections between these neurons. The cycle and the connection between neurons is, is uh, relatively faster, which is about one millisecond. So let us look on the other side, how complex can uh, we make computers today? So computers today, we can have about 10 to the power eight or more transistors for a CPU for one computer. And sober computers can have hundreds of CPUs and can have a big uh, memory, uh, can reach to 10 to the power 12 bits of the RAM, which is a computer memory. And it has much faster uh, communication than the human brain synapses. That is, it, the cycle here, the time cycle is about uh, 10 to the power minus 9, which is about three times faster than the human brain. In conclusion, can we build uh, a, 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 a computer as complex as our brain? Yes, it is possible in the near future we can have computers which uh, uh, with as many basic processing elements as our brain. But the problem 
is we, we will have uh, much far fewer interconnections, wires or synapses than the brain. So this is a big issue because the processing is comes from this connection, but because it's wire connection, as you can see, it's very complicated. So it's very difficult to have a connections like we have in our real brain. And uh, of course, the computers is much faster updates than our brain for because the time cycle is much faster. But the question is building hardware is very different from making computer behave like a brain because there is many issues in the brain is still not understood, like emotions, for example, or creativity. And this kind of thing is, is difficult to understand or difficult to imitate. Even if we can build a hardware as power as a brain, but that is different from we can make it behave like the brain. AI is very important issue in this, uh, you know, uh, our daily lives. It touches everything as you can see. So for example, many science are connected with artificial intelligence. For example, probability and statics, uh, we use modeling and uncertainty, uh, learning from data. This is part of the you know, artificial intelligence. Also neuroscience, Neurons as information processing unit, like the CPU uh, of the computer. So this is also important to connect with artificial intelligence. Psychology and the cognitive science. How do people behave, perceive, process cognitive information, represent knowledge, and so on? That's also a big issue in artificial intelligence. Connect it with uh, psychology. It's also connected with economy. So like... Uh, utility, decision theory, uh, rational economic agents, uh, prediction of the stock market, and so on. So many applications of artificial intelligence is economy uh, today. In linguistics also, we have uh, knowledge, uh, representation, grammars, uh, natural language processing. You can see now automatic translations that are getting more and more better, like Google Translate and so on, using also artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. In control theory, design systems is that maximize an objective function over time. That's also important because control theory is used in many industry, from car to computers and, uh, and other industry. Computer engineering also, we want to build a fast and uh, powerful computers. That's also AI can be helped in, in building such computers. In mathematics also, formal representation and the proof uh, algorithms, uh, computation, undecidability, tractability, many open problems in mathematics can be solved uh, using artificial intelligence algorithms like we will see some examples shortly. In philosophy also, the logic and the methods for reasoning, mind as physical system, foundations of learning, language, rationality, many, many things is, is uh, we can use artificial intelligence and philosophy in artificial intelligence together. So that is uh, just some of the uh, connection of artificial intelligence with other academic fields. So let us see some success stories. We, all of us maybe heard about Deep Blue, which defeated uh, the Reagan World Chess Champion, Gary Kasparov in 1997. Another story also AI uh, program proved the mathematical conjecture that's called the Robbins conjecture, which was unsolved for 10th of years, which is long time was unsolved, but uh, an AI program could solve this uh, conjecture in mathematics. Also during the 1991 Gulf War, the US forces deployed a logistic plan and scheduling a program that involved more than 50,000 vehicles, cargo and the people together and all are controlled by a machine learning algorithms and AI uh, uh, tools. Also NASA unbound autonomous planning programs. That's also almost all controlled the scheduling of operations of spacecraft using AI and machine learning algorithms. Proverb solves crossword puzzles better than most humans. Proverb is also AI based uh, application that is uh, created using uh, machine learning algorithms that can solve the crossword puzzles much better than most of the humans. Uh, robot driving DARPA, that's a grand challenge since uh, 2003, which uh, uh, challenged to create 
autonomous car that can or autonomous robot that can work in a hard terrain like for example after disasters or after earthquake and so on also probably you see these robots before softbank paper and honda asimo this was a very advanced humanoid robot especially the asimo even unfortunately it is retired now but it was one of the most advanced uh, robotics technology that was uh, created by uh, uh, Honda. Also from 2006, so probably all of us use digital camera or mobile uh, uh, mo mobile phones that has a, a camera and has face recognition software. This was available earlier in 2006 using machine learning and AI uh, technologies. This is some, there is a lot, a lot of uh, success stories, but this is just a few of them. AI and the machine learning also comes with many, as I mentioned before, uh, many applications in social media, face recognition, speech recognition, navigation, uh, spam filtering for email, fraud detection in the bank. Uh, for example, if you use your credit card and so on. So there is uh, AI applications in the bank that you use that can detect the fraud. Stock and weather forecast detection also for the future. Healthcare, there's many also application for detection of disease like cancer and so on. AI now help in this. And uh, visual assistant also in, in uh, virtual assistant in teaching. That's also, I will give some examples later on. Uh, autopilot uh, in the cars and the flights. I also will show shortly some example and suggestions of products and e-business. So let me just to give three examples of this. So I will give example about uh, autopilot and I will give example about speech recognition. And I will give about my research area in recommender system. That is, that's the most of the part of my presentation will be in this example about recommender system, which is suggestions of products in e-business mostly. So, but let me give two examples about the autopilot and the speech recognition before going into the more details in recommender system. So uh, Stanford University created an autonomous <laughs> helicopter. Let us see how this helicopter behave. So this hel helicopter can take off. It is, you know, uh, without pilot, this one. And uh, it can do many of the skills that the real pilot can do. Uh, like you will see now some of the skills that is done by the real pilot. This is, uh, you know, uh, like a split S, it can do this skill. A snap rule, it can do this. Stool turn. So many skills can be done like loops that can be uh, done by real pilot. This machine learning algorithm who run this uh, pilot list can do all the skills that the real pilot can. This is show you how uh, very useful to have a powerful machine learning and AI algorithms that can uh, drive this kind of uh, helicopter without any, with many skills, as you can see, that uh, takes many, many uh, training hours of the real pilot to do this but machine learning algorithms can do it in a, in a good way, as you can see. Many, many techniques and uh, skills that takes a lot of time from real pilot can be done using machine learning algorithms like you can see. Okay, now I will show you another example about speech recognition example. That's also a very interesting example. This example uh, is about, uh, it's called the cocktail party problem. In this, uh, there is a room. In this room, there is two speakers, speaker one and speaker two. They speak together in the same time. There is two microphones. These two microphones in uh, different distances from the two speakers. And these microphones record the sound uh, in the room. And uh, the second experiment, the second speaker will be replaced by music. So we will see these two experiments. Let us look to this. So in the first experiment, uh, we have uh, two speakers and uh, have been recorded uh, speaking simultaneously. Speaker one says the digits from one to 10 in English, 
and speaker two counts at the same time the digits in Spanish. Uh, the recording has been done in a normal office room. So let us see, listen, how the first microphone record the sound. One, two, two three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, eight, 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 Okay, let us see how the second microphone record the sound. One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 nine, eight, nine, eight. Okay, now let us pass the output of the first microphone to the machine learning algorithm and see how it can recognize the speech of one of the speakers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so the English speaker now, it's, its voice is recognized by machine learning. Now we can also use a machine learning adopted algorithm that can also recognize the second speaker if we want. Let us see the, the output of the second microphone. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, y diez. Okay, this is the first experiment. This, in the second experiment, we will replace the second speaker with a music. So the room has one speaker and some music. And let us see how this is will happen. And again, two microphones so with different distances from the source of the sound. So let us see how the first microphone record the sound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is a second microphone output recorded sound. Again, we will use machine learning algorithms to recognize the sound of the speaker or the music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's clearly filter this sound of the speaker. And the second one, let us see. This also can uh, uh, filter the, the sound of the music. You can see this is very useful kind of application, but let us see what is behind this application. So what is the machine learning algorithm is behind this one? You will be surprised to see how it looks like this algorithm. Okay, let us see. This is called the singular value decomposition algorithm. And that's used in many machine learning applications. Let us see how this algorithm basically looks like. Of course, there is some variations of this, but let us see the basic, how it looks like. You will be surprised to see. This is the algorithm. It's just A equal U sigma V to the power T. This is just a kind of decomposition of an input algorithm. So the data is represented as a matrix and this matrix is decomposed into three uh, matrices, as you will see. It looks like this one. This is just a simple example. So the input uh, matrix A is of order M by N. I expect, of course, some of you know about matrices because one of the basic uh, mathematics probably you study in high school. And also, if you study a course about linear algebra, this is very helpful to study about machine learning. So you can understand this kind of algorithms uh, uh, or matrices is a more better. So this is how it looks like. Now, for the surprise, how we can implement this one to produce this kind of filtering of the speech recognition like we see in the cocktail party problem. So people maybe if we use traditional languages like Java or C or C++ and this kind of language, that's need a big um, coding and time consuming. But let us see how this cocktail party problem was implemented. This is the program. You see, this is a program. This is just one line code. This line code or this line code who recognize the sound of different uh, output of microphones like we see. So the reason for this just very uh, elegant uh, way of coding, there is many languages that can be used for prototyping in machine language. This, uh, this line of code is made from Octave language. This is a fast prototyping of machine learning algorithms. There is other, of course, variations. You can do this in Python, or you can do this in, uh, for example, MATLAB, uh, because this uh, kind of high level programming languages have a big library of machine learning algorithms. So you don't need to code 
uh, the details of the algorithm yourself. Or all what you need just to call, like we call in this code, in this line of code, we just to call the SVD, the singular value decomposition algorithm with some input that can just represent the data that we want to analyze and we want to process. Okay, this was about introduction to uh, art artificial intelligence. Now I will talk about recommender systems. Okay, in our daily lives, we use computers, we use tablets, we use smart devices like mobile phones, smart mobile phones, and so on. So we do everything now from our mobile or from our computer, like business, as industrial applications, as social media, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. entertainment applications, Netflix, Benadora, shopping online like Amazon, eBay, and so on, video oriented like YouTube, TikTok, uh, learning uh, like edX, uh, Coursera, TED, uh, medical services that you can just give some data and you can get some uh, recommendation of some medical uh, advice and so on. A lot of things we do every day. What is the common thing between all these kind of applications that we use every day? The common thing is there is an AI based brain behind all these applications. The purpose of this AI powerful uh, brain is to understand the user. Who are you? How we, this, uh, you know, uh, how this works? So the reason to understand understand the user of the applications is to get appropriate feedback in a win-win situation. So the user win because you get a good uh, advertising or a good recommendation for items that maybe you don't know about it. And also the business owner get win because he also can advertise his products in an elegant way to not just for general customers, but for a specific uh, interested customers, which is a win-win situation. This uh, uh, powerful AI based brain engine is basically based on recommendation system or recommender system algorithms, which connect users and the data together. So I will talk about this uh, a, a little bit more. So recommender systems are intelligent decision support systems that have important real life applications with a challenging process, like I just mentioned, some of them in e-commerce, social networks, e-learning, medical systems, and much more. The role of recommender system is twofold. The first is to predict the value. So how you are going to be interested about a specific item or product, how the user will be interested about this one. The second task is to recommend resources. So it just have a short list of uh, recommendations that can be recommended to the specific user. So the recommendation system is interdisciplinary field that compressing uh, computer science, uh, data science, statistics, marketing, uh, operation research, psychology, and it deploy also sophisticated machine learning, uh, big data, deep learning, and other methods that operate at scale. And also it is now become mission critical according to some study by uh, Colson, uh, because they drive more than 35% of Amazon sales comes from recommendation systems. More than 50% of LinkedIn connection, which is a social network for researcher. This is also comes from uh, recommendation systems. More than 80% of Netflix streamed hours comes from also recommendation system that's a movie platform. That is safe for Netflix about $1 billion per year, which is a lot, of course, of money. Uh, it, there is a lot of interest from industry in the academic research of recommender system, and that's a very active research area uh, recently. There is many you know, issues and challenges with recommendation systems. The important thing is the objectives that we have to a prediction accuracy, to predict some missed data or missed values in accurate way and to give the top end recommendation, the most important recommendation. Also, what kind of technology should be employed? There is many kinds of technologies can be like probabilistic approaches, based in networks, nearest neighbors. All these is our kind of machine learning algorithms and optimization algorithms. 
the also filtering there is many kind of filtering demographic filtering which area you are leaving content based on what is the content of the items collaborative filtering how people together collaborate uh, social based uh, context aware hybrid and so on what kind of data data ratings data features data content of the items uh, social relationship uh, location aware and so on what kind of methods can be used the memory based or model based to build a machine learning model that can learn and there is some problems called the sparsity level and the cold start if we have a new item this item no ratings for this item or a new user to the system how the system will recommend something for a new new user who don't have any uh, profile for this user and so on. This is many of the challenges and the problems. Recommendation techniques can be divided into personalized and non-personalized recommendations. So the non-personalized recommendation is not important because that is, this is just to, to recommend, that's like uh, traditional advertising. Send uh, the advertise to everyone. Nevertheless, this person is interested about this item or not. But personalized recommendation, that is to send the advertisement to the interested people. So people get different advertising based on their different interests. There is uh, many techniques like uh, content-based filtering, collaborative filtering, hybrid, and so on. So the, this is, there is many also machine learning and AI and data science technologies behind this recommendation system. Let me give an example of the most common used tool. The most common used tool is content-based filtering and collaborative filtering. Let And the hybrid, Hi, hybrid is between the connection of both of them. But let me give uh, uh, just a simple explanation about the content-based uh, filtering for recommendation system and collaborative filtering. So the content-based uh, filtering, it makes a recommendation based on your history and the similarities. Let us see how this is happening. Assume you're reading some book and you give this book about cook, cooking book, for example, and you give high rating for this book. You like this book and you get high rating this book. So the recommender system will look in the uh, cyberspace about similar books for the contents, that is based on the content. So similarity check here, need machine learning algorithm to find the similarity. Then this kind of other similar books will be recommended to you. But different books, for example, like history book will not be recommended to you. That is based on the content itself of what you are reading. On the other side, there is collaborative filtering. That is. Uh, based recommendation based on the preferences with similar user who are similar to you. Let us also explain this by a simple animation. Assume you like to eat burger and you like to eat sushi. For example, there is another user, the system will try to find users who looks like you. So the system can find a user who also like burger and sushi this is a similarity check. This similarity check is based on a machine learning complicated algorithms. Then after finding this similarity and find this user, of course, it's not, you, you search in a billions of users to find this similarity and to many, many issues to find this similarity. It's not simple like I just explained by this animation. I just give a simple example to give you the idea about how it works. Assume this uh, similar user as well like, for example, ramen, another food. In this case, because of the similarity between both of you, the ramen will be recommended to you. This is a basic idea of the similarity between users to just to get recommendation for the target specific user, but by something that you might be interested in. So if we take traditional uh, recommendation is based on the users and items and uh, the overall rating of the item. For example, if you look here in this uh, the upper uh, image, you find we have user A and user B and user C, and we have different movies. So the we have one, two, three, four, five movies here. Uh, user A give an overall rating for the movies. For example, five, seven. Uh, five, seven, but he didn't rate, maybe he didn't watch this movie. 
the user B rate the movies, the, the same movies by five, seven, five, seven, and nine. The last user C give a rating six, 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 and five. So the system will check the, there is a missed rating here for the first user the for for the this movie so the in this case the system will try to find the similarity it will find it between user a and user b because the rating is almost the same for other movies so most probably this rating will be predicted as nine because this is similar a is similar to b not similar to c we talk in reality about billions of users, but that's just a very simple example. The other uh, recent uh, way of recommendation is not only uh, different from traditional, this is called the multi-criteria recommendation. In, in multi-criteria, there is many uh, you know, more complicated issues because it's not only about overall rating of the movie, but there is a specific part of the movie. For, ex for example, let us take action. A rating for action, rating for visual effect, rating for story, rating for direction, and so on. So you can have many ratings in addition to R0, which is the overall rating. So in this case, we have the user A, for example, rated different criteria in this way, and so on. So, but this one, many ratings here should be predicted. So that's also will be based on similarity. Uh, our machine learning algorithm, we have, we, 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 uh, invented in, in my research group two uh, algorithms that help improve the machine, the, the, the uh, prediction of this uh, recommendation system. One is based on artificial machine learning, is based on artificial neural network model, and the other one is optimization based on genetic algorithm based model, but basically the structure is the same, only we uh, make different algorithms. So uh, here is we have the data set, the composition data set is a collected data from billions of users, for example, then the splitting this into training data and testing data. And then we implement a neural network algorithm to find the uh, values, most uh, missed values of or missed criteria, and then to uh, run it again to get the final recommendation. In the machine, uh, in, in the genetic algorithm, we also decompose the data and then we try to find the fitness function that uh, can produce the uh, values that's called the fitness values that can give us approximately equation like this one that can calculate the prediction of the recommended items. That's what we did. And we tested our data uh, or our models with different models. And as you can see, our model here has a high uh, prediction compared with other existing models. For example, our models with this criteria like RMSE, this is, and MEE, this is criteria for uh, evaluating the recommender system. We have a good evaluation. So we have 52 compared with others. 54 here is the highest one. This is just some of our research uh, in the recommendation system. I can summarize our recommendation system in this uh, image. So we created two new multi-criteria recommendation models. Uh, one is based on genetic algorithm, like I just mentioned, and one is based on artificial neural network in machine learning. And then we make implementation of this using a Python language, and then we make the evaluation of this. Evaluation is using real life data set, and we used the two data sets from Yahoo Movie and Trip Advisor. If you know Trip Advisor is a common um, you know platform for uh, for making trips and uh, like hotels and so on. And then we have metrics for the evaluation and we found that both the our artificial neural network and genetic uh, based algorithm approaches outperform existing techniques like I mentioned in the previous slide. And both the two methods improve not only prediction, but also the recommendation and ranking accuracy. And uh, we compared the two methods together, we find the machine learning based artificial neural network better than using genetic algorithms. Okay, the sum of future direction, uh, probably, I don't know if you hear about Society5, I will just shortly explain about Society5, which is Japan try to now move to this new society. I will 
shortly explain about this. But this is just uh, some future directions. So from uh, down to up from the uh, you know basic research to applications. So we try to use artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science to improve the recommendation. So there is three techniques that can be used like deep learning, knowledge graph, and reinforcement learning. So this is can help. For example, deep learning can help in capture the user's long and short term preferences, what the user like in the short term or what the user can like in the long term and so on. So because of uh, time limitations, maybe I just cannot explain this in more details because I still have many things to explain, but this is just some of the future direction. So the goal after applying the deep learning knowledge graph reinforcement learning can solve these problems that currently exist and then we can get what's called the explainable recommender system that can be dynamic and transparent and efficient and scalable, which means explainable here means not only you get the recommendation, but you get explanation why this is recommended to me, why this friend is recommended to me in Facebook, why this book is recommended to me uh, in, in Amazon. So this is important for uh, for us to get explainable recommender systems. That may be lead to user satisfaction and the trust on recommendation system, which is part of the society five of the Japans that want to go ahead. So uh, next, I will explain example about Netflix example. So quickly, let us see how Netflix recommender system works. Because as I mentioned before, Netflix recommender system is very successful because 80% of business of Netflix comes from their recommendation. So the Netflix collect the data from the users. So there is billions of users, or maybe, I don't know exactly millions or billions, but there is a lot of people are using Netflix as a movie platform. So this data is collected uh, from this user and then organized in a data set in some way with the ratings of the people. And this data set then pre-processed and the similarity computation is done. So now they want to target a specific user. This is called the target user from other similar users. So the machine learning algorithm here will make a similarity computation from the data collected from this data set. Then it will go another phase of the prediction. So the missed item or the missed ratings will be calculated here. And then the final part of the machine learning algorithm will give the final recommendation to the target user. So this is how it works in a simple way. This is an uh, image from my Netflix itself. So this is, you see here, uh, top picks for Muhammad. That is recommended for me from a real Netflix. So this movie is recommended based on my uh, personal profile that was built by the recommender systems of Netflix to me. Now I will go to about education, application of AI and recommendation system in education. Education has many problems. So we try in University of ISO to tackle this issue in a local and regional and the global way. So we try to identify the local, for example, we have poor academic performance for some students. We have some heavy teaching load. Uh, we have this discouragement of our education. We need to make faculty development, uh, failure to address diversity of students, uh, maybe poor materials, incompatible materials, outdating subjects. And in the regional, this is applied to local as well as regional, as well as global. This is in the common problems. For regionals, additional problems apply like educational inequality, uh, lack of teachers, for example, lack of experience in advanced education, lack of learning materials, uh, the school with educational difficulties. And globally, uh, this is also applied regionally and globally. Additionally, we have educational inequality because of econ different economic environment. So this is, we call it a ripple effect. If you know the ripple effect is just uh, what we call one small thing, it can have a big impact. So in this case, you can see uh, this is in the water. If you just make a simple uh, drop in the water, it can have a big impact and that circle is going to grow. So 
the small changes can make a big change. That's what, what we hope in our research and study. This is Society 5 of Japan. So this uh, Society 5 was proposed in the fifth science and the technology basic plan of the Japanese government uh, as a future society that Japan should aspire to. So Society 5 will bring about human-centered society. This is current society. This is called Society 4 now. This is current information. We have clouds, like for example, if you use like uh, uh, iCloud or Google Cloud and so on, and uh, some interested people using a specific cloud and you upload your data, take your data, and that is isolated in some way. And this is a cyberspace, and that is a physical or real space. So people use this cloud in different for uh, different issues. And but the future will be about society five where the cyberspace will have uh, centered on big data and artificial intelligence where people can share everything, not specific, just the cloud, but people can share everything in the physical space that comes for, and analyzed by artificial intelligence from some recommendation and so on. So to deal with such education challenge, the sustainable development goals set by the United Nations uh, in a global scale and nationwide by the Japanese government in the Society 5 plan, uh, there is 17 goals that the United Nations want to, to tackle and Japanese government to follow this uh, model. One of these goals is number four, is about quality education. So quality education is set as a sustainable, one of the sustainable development goals by the United Nations and the Japanese government. And I believe that many governments worldwide also try to tackle these 17 issues. So to achieve this uh, sustainable development to goals of quality education, the UNESCO Institute of Information Technology in Education indicates that AI will play a pivotal role in education technology by helping it to realize the promise of personalized learning. That is the key point. If we can make personalized learning like a personalized recommendation, then we can achieve this quality education goal. This is as recognized by the UNESCO Institute of Information Technology. Also, the US Department of Education in its National Education Technology Plan published a report about transforming the American education. In this report, they write, technology gives students opportunities for taking ownership of their learning. Personalized learning, which is a kind of personalized recommendation learning, is based to student needs, tailored to learning preferences and customized to the specific interests of different learners. In conclusion, personalized learning or personalized recommendation learning is an important key toward this quality education as a sustainable development goal by the United Nations. So what is, what is uh, this personalized learning is about? In traditional teaching model, we treat all learners the same, despite unique needs and strengths. In the classroom, we give the same materials as teachers. We give them the same topics. We give them the same exam. Everything is the same. That is not the appropriate way because the students are different. They have different uh, skills. Uh, they have different interests and they have some uniqueness and so on. So the classroom learning must go beyond a one size fit all mentality to a personal fit learning style that can be recommended to a specific students that is suitable for the 21st century education challenges. So the personalized learning is a system that adapted to learner needs and support differentiated learning and increase the frequency of formative assessment, different assessments for different students, providing the learners a choice about what and how they learn, not just provide to them, but also give them kind of freedom to choose what they want to learn. Customize instruction based on performance and preferences. That's important issue also to give a customized or recommended kind of recommended or customized instructions to different students. Approaches that uh, turn learners into creators. This is an important thing. It's about learning to be a creator, not just to be 
uh, just to receive the learning and just do simple tasks, but to be a, a creator, that's important for personalized learning. So in University of ISO, we have a vision for the 2033. And in this vision, we try to be compatible with the sustainable development goals by United Nations and the Japanese Society 5. And we want to apply the advances in uh, artificial intelligence data science for realization of personalized learning and support for the SDG4 uh, quality education goal. So it is about student-centered personalized recommended uh, learning. This is our uh, plan, or this is our project plan. In this plan, you can see we start from the basics data about students. This data we can collect from different things like learning materials, uh, learning style index, uh, uh, looks of students, how the students use uh, models and so on. Academic performance, what is how the students uh, perform in their lectures, exams, and exercises, and so on. Then this data will be used to uh, use algorithms and theory like machine learning, data learning, data mining, ontology, uh, visualization, user interface using artificial intelligence, data science software technologies to extract useful information about students from the collected data. Then this will help us to build the framework and the methods for learning. The, we have a plan for many uh, le uh, framework learning like adaptive learning framework, intelligent tutoring system, uh, adaptive user interface, and so on. Then this framework will, we plan to apply in classroom for technical skill training, like programming classes, machine learning classes, robot classes, data mining class, and so on. In education language classes, like English, technical communication, and so on. And in general education, like mathematics, physics, and so on. Then after apply this, our framework is here, we will collect the data again and repeat this cycle, taking into consideration the ecosystem, and during this, we will try to publish the reports, any findings that we have, we will publish in a form of output of our research, like research output, like papers, uh, patents, and so on, uh, technical reports, and so on. This is our uh, project plan. I will just quickly mention three parts of this plan. Uh, what's adaptive learning framework, intelligent tutoring system, and learning style index. I will just give three examples because we don't have much time, but let me quickly give these three examples about adaptive learning framework, intelligent tutoring system, and learning style index. So this is uh, our plan for the adaptive learning framework. In this learning framework, we have here the learner. Learner here are using a user interface. This user interface will collect the learner's data and this student data will be passed to what is called the predictive model in this one. So this predictive model will try to evaluate and predict the student's performance. These students have good progress, bad progress, middle progress, and so on. The output of this predictive model will be passed into one to the what is called the adoption engine and one to the dashboard. So the output will go to this adoption engine. This adoption engine will have a built-in recommender system. This is will create a tailored content that is suitable for this specific student and that's will rec be recommended to these students again. And the other side is a dashboard. This dashboard will analyze the predictive model input and pass it to the teacher and administrator. So the teacher and the administrator will use this data through what is called the intervention engine. This intervention engine will have uh, feedback from the administrator or the teacher to the students in a form also of a different recommendation. So this is how it looks like. If we take the other thing about intelligent tutoring system, so let me here, uh, the goal here is to create, uh, to tackle these difficulties in education in some practical skills. 
So in some practical skills, the traditional way is reading and then designing some model and then make some implementation of program and then make a test. If the test is okay, then you can still try to improve it again and repeat the, the cycle again. If the testing has a problem, there is error. So you can correct this error and depends what kind of error happened, you can repeat again from one of these levels. So you can go back to implementation if the error in the implementation. If the error in the design, you go back. And if the error in, in the uh, theoretical part, you go for reading again, and this one. So we will create, this is a task usually done by the real teacher. So our task in, the, in this project is to create a virtual teacher. That virtual teacher can work in an autonomous way that can do the same tasks with the students without a real teacher. And that will be good for the students because the students can repeat it as long as the students need, without need a real teacher. Also, it can work in hybrid, hybrid mode that the teacher can use it also in teaching to reduce teaching load and to also help in some part of the course materials and so on. That is can help to tackle some challenges uh, that we face and some tasks uh, like coding, review, grading, coding, debugging, preparation, evaluation, and so on. So if we take this, uh, assistant, uh, the teaching assistant in a bigger scale. So we have here the, our model has four components. One is based on artificial intelligence, where we will use algorithms, AI algorithms to help in reviewing and support for coding support, for debugging is a code and support and refactoring support recommendation and so on. We also will use the data science for learning management support, the data analysis, data mining, databases, and so on. We will use also visualization component for to visualize information and knowledge representation, visual languages, analytical dashboard, and so on. And we have also already implemented here in University of ISO about what's called online judge system. This online judge system do automatic assessment in coding and automatic grading for the code of the students is correct or not, the program is correct or not. And we have cloud architecture and we follow the ecosystem uh, platforms. So these four things, we will create the intelligent uh, coding editor that is will be made from artificial intelligence and the online judge platforms. And then we will have also adaptive learning framework that will be made from the AI and data science part. And then we have learning analytics that will be built uh, from the data science and the visualization. And this part will be built from the, the online judge system and the visualization. So that's the visual programming environment. That is our vision for the environment or the virtual teaching assistant. Uh, the third example that I mentioned this in the previous image about learning style index. Learning style index refers to educational theories that consider differences in individual learning. It classifies learners according to their style of learning because people are different. So they have learn different learning styles. Learning styles has gained a widespread recognition in educational theory and it depends on cognition and emotional factors. That is will help, why do I need to know my learning style? This is a question, and how do I know my learning style? That's what I will try to answer in the next slides. So the, you can see the learning style model that we use is have one, two, three, four, five things about processing, uh, perception of the learning, input of the learning, understand and effect. Every dimension of these five has two sub-dimensions. For example, process, we classify the students into active and reflective. Active learners gain information through learning by doing. Some students like to do things by hand so they can understand it better, but other students want to reflect. That's called the reflective learners. They gain information by thinking about it, reading it, okay? So this is, they don't like to do things by hand. This is called the active reflective uh, or processing. The second dimension is about perception, which about sensing. 
sensor, uh, sensing learners tend to, to learn effects through their sensors. We have five sensors uh, as a human, like touching or smelling or listening or watching. Uh, and it's using a mix of sensing. Some students learn better if they mix their senses in the learning process. Another students are called intuitive. Intuitive learners prefer discovering possibilities and relationships. They don't use much of their sensors in the learning process. The third dimension is about input, visual and verbal. Visual learners prefer images, diagrams, tables, movies, and demos. They can learn better with these tools. But verbal, verbal learners, they prefer written and spoken words. They don't like to watch movie or they don't like to watch tables or diagrams. They just want to read a text. Another dimension that's understanding. There is two kinds of learners in this dimension, sequential and the global. Sequential learners get, gain understanding from details and the logical sequential. They cannot jump. They just want to go from step to step, step by step, step by step. Another uh, learners who want to, who don't like to just uh, tire from details. They want to jump to the have can jump in many parts just to, to reach a conclusion to understand the topic. The final one is uh, dimension is the effect which is social. Some people prefer learning in a social environment, learning with others. I don't like to study alone, but on the other side, the learning who like to study alone. That's emotional learners, they just feel not comfort in the crowd or when some people are around them. This is just about learning style. Our solution in this is we try to, uh, that's just to, to tell you, the learning style will help the learners need to know their preferred learning style as a way to enhance their personal learning experience. Teachers also, need to know their students preferred learning style as a way to enhance their teaching style and to prepare personalized and uh, and uh, recommended educational materials so in the in our research we do some cloud implementation of the model that i already just explained uh, that the students can use it from their mobile or tablets and uh, they can check their learning, preferred learning style from this, uh, the cloud. And then the teacher can access this data from the cloud and they can get a vision of the classroom students can classify the students. So the teacher can get more understanding of what kind of students in the class. So I can prepare a different, better personalized recommended teaching materials for them. Okay, this was about this part and uh, I think we just have a couple of minutes. So uh, some of research at University of Iowa, I just quickly mentioned some of them. This is my research group, some students in my uh, class, in, in, in my laboratory. And uh, this is the research that I'm currently interested about machine learning approaches. So we use it in different ways. So we, I have some research in medical diagnosis, especially for cancer, but I didn't mention in this presentation because of time limitation. I also work in recommended system. That's what I just give more explanation about this. I also work in uh, intelligent learning technologies and smart mobile learning. I already introduced this also. All of these uh, projects that I'm working on with my students is based on machine learning, uh, many, uh, different ways of machine learning algorithms that we use. Uh, other laboratories here, so that's uh, Ben Abdullah, Professor Ben Abdullah group. He work in cognitive brain inspired computing system. You can access his website as given blue to see more about his applications and his research. This is some of the students. Uh, another also we have here, uh, uh, ISO Research uh, Center uh, for uh, space. Uh, space information, that's the Mora Sensei activities. He have also many activities uh, about uh, information. He has collaboration with JASCA, which is like NASA in, Japan, in, in, in America. JASCA is a Japanese agency for uh, astronomy and the space agency. So he has some uh, work with them. And this is another lab uh, that is Chen Sensei lab who work in uh, uh, computer recognition of like uh, signature recognition, handwriting recognition, and so on. This is some of his projects. 
that you work on. Another lab is a sabbatical media uh, lab that's Kohen Sensei. You work in some sabbatical uh, media like virtual reality, augmented reality, and so on. This is some of his projects that work in science engineering technology. Uh, that's some of his projects. And finally, I will just quickly introduce the University of ISO. So University of ISO was a relatively new university established in 93 as the first university in Japan solely dedicated only to computer science and engineering. It's a public university. It is funded by Fukushima Prefecture. Uh, we have two departments, graduate department and undergraduate department, and it is number one among the public universities in fostering venture startup companies, and many of them are located near the university. And also, according to the World uh, Times ranking of universities, so the, the in the 20, uh, 2021 World University ranking, uh, University of ISO was ranked 600 to 800 in this in the world, and it is uh, number 14th overall among Japanese universities, and it is number one for international outlook in Japan. And uh, 2021 Japan University ranking, we was at 24th. And also, University of ISO was selected by the Japanese government for the 10-year uh, global uh, top global university project in 2014. Only 37 uh, universities out of 756 universities in Japan, only 37 was selected. University of ISO was one of them. Okay, that's all for my presentation today. Thank you for your interest. And uh, this is my email address if someone is interested to contact me for, because this is a time limitation, if you want to get more information about study in Japan, or you want to get more information about University of ISO or more information about my uh, area of specialization, please contact me in one of these email addresses so we can be in touch with me at any time. Again, thank you for your interest. And that's all from me today. And I can, be uh, ready for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Hamada Sensei, for the uh, this presentation. Really, it's like very informative. We highly appreciate your time and cooperation. Maybe we ask if someone is having question. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's really amazing. Maybe I have a question for Hamada Sensei. Yes, sure. So about the artificial intelligence, like it's useful in all areas, but maybe, of course, like for every point, we have like the advantages and some inconvenient points. What do you think about the challenges facing the artificial intelligence and how it's affecting our society, maybe? Yeah, that's really, really very important question. And that's, uh, you know, this is uh, has ethical, you know, artificial intelligence has a technical issues and uh, ethical issues. That's how it's going to affect our uh, life, really, because if we go ahead in the research and the directions that we are going now, it will have a big impact and uh, it changes in societies. Um, because AI touches everything in our life, especially if we start to, to uh, implement uh, micro or nano devices that's based on AI that can be implement, implemented inside the human body that can give the, the human, change the human behavior in some way or control the human in some way. So there should be, you know, from ethical point of view, there should be laws and um, uh, rules that should be enforced globally and lo locally just to, to adapt because everything has good points and bad points that you can use like a knife. A knife, you can use it to do good things at kitchen, but also it can be used as a killing tool. Okay, so there is, should be a rules to control. The same thing is for AI. AI can be a very good tool that can improve our life, but it, in the same time, it can be a way to destroy our environment maybe destroy our uh, lives. So it should be ethically controlled in some way 
not just to continue in research and doing what uh, people just challenge. We can do this and we can do that. We can do this, and but it should be a limitation. What stop at this point? And uh, I don't know how this is, can be enforced in uh, globally and uh, locally in some governments because this is, has a huge, huge impact in our life in the near future. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, Sansei. And maybe we can uh, end up our uh, session for today by giving a message for students who would like to join the University of Aizu and focus more on the AI. The floor is yours, Sensei. Yes, yeah. We have here a lot of research interests that is, uh, you know, uh, can we, you can, if you like, to study. Of course, Japan is a very good place to study because uh, Japan has a very good technology and the infrastructure for education in almost all universities in Japan is very highly you know implemented so also students have a big freedom in their research in some way and uh, specifically that's in general in Japan but if I speak about the University of Aizu we have international environment and I want to say the official language of University of Aizu is English so you don't need to study Japanese at all just if maybe for daily life outside university, maybe you study some basics, but basically for your study uh, from undergraduates, uh, postgraduate uh, to doctoral degree, you don't need any English, uh, oh, sorry, any Japanese language. You just, everything is done, even for Japanese students, they have to write their thesis, they take their classes in English. So it's very good for uh, Middle East students to join uh, this kind of university without a fear of a language barrier and so on. Second, University of ISO has international environment. Uh, nearly 50% of our faculty members are foreigners, international. So we have a very good culture uh, of uh, dealing with in, in international environment. So if you come, you will feel in some way inside the university, you will feel like a home. So you will not be uh, feel isolated maybe in some other Japanese universities with the Japanese culture is more maybe some students can maybe uh, take time to adapt to the system. But in University of ISO, you will be adapted from the early stage of your study. So you can join at as early as a bachelor degree. You can study in English. You will have international environment. We have here good infrastructures. We have, you know, many experiments. Uh, we have professors work in a variety of uh, AI applications, uh, theory, and uh, we have also additionally, if you want to study English, we have uh, English uh, center, language center that you can study additional English to improve if you want to improve your English. So there is many pluses if you want to join University of ISO. So I hope uh, the students can think about Japan in general and the University of ISO in particular. That's my advice. Thank you very much, Sensei. Uh, sorry, like it's all already time, but we have an inquiry from a student asking about the tuition fees and about uh, how to join the University of Aizu. Is it expensive to study in Japan all over? In Japan in general, no. There's a good point in Japanese, especially public universities is relatively cheap compared even with Egypt. <laughs> that my country, if you study in a... In, in Egypt or Turkey or uh, as in private university in Middle East, it's maybe more expensive than Japan. The tuition is around $5,000 per year, which is not a big you know, amount because this amount you can pay it maybe more in some uh, Egyptian or Turkish or some Middle East university in general. So I think it is not uh, expensive. Additionally, we offer for the students, even undergraduates, a kind of teaching assistant that you can work for helping your teachers, your supervisor in some work, and you can get some salaries that can help you to survive in some way, pay, maybe some, pay some part of your tuition and so on. Plus, of course, many students can find also, because as I mentioned, uh, ISO University is number one in venture universe. So we have many venture companies around us made by our alumni and uh, former students. And they always recruit students to work with them as part-time job. So it's a win-win situation. The students can earn some money and learn some experience. And also these companies can find a good qualified staff for themselves is a relatively cheap 
So that is, you know, things that can help the students also to survive. Exactly. Again, yeah. thank you very much, Sensei, for your time. My pleasure. Sorry yeah. for, the, for the 10 minutes, uh, then, but we highly appreciate it. Uh, we will upload the uh, session on our YouTube channel, Jemena, and everyone who missed the uh, session, you can find it and watch it again and learn more about the AI and how to join the University of ISO. Thank you again and stay safe, Sensei, and hope to see you okay. soon, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone, and have a good day if you are in the Middle East, and a good night if you are in Japan. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.